seconds away on Studio 5. We're in Hollywood. For a priceless conversation with the Grammy Award winning duo for King and Country. And then. I'm glad the week is over. I need to get away. Anthony Hamilton has a Grammy on his mantle, and we're catching up with him on a Hollywood red carpet. Without faith, I would have given up. Plus. Dodgers first baseman, Adrian Gonzalez. You put your purpose on Jesus. Um, you know, that'll never be taken away. All in Studio 5 Hollywood, starting now. Hi there, welcome to Studio 5, coming to you this week from Los Angeles, California, the city there in the backdrop. It has just celebrated the biggest night in music, so it is the perfect place for us to bring you the show this week. Let's get started with the top five from Studio 5. At number five. Amazing Grace. The Queen of Soul retires. Born in Memphis, raised in Detroit, Aretha Franklin reminds us of the hard road that is the American dream. Franklin turns 75 next month. And we're gonna just take me some time. And all through my coffee rates are And she's collaborating with longtime friend Stevie Wonder to produce her final album. Strong is born from the obstacles that we overcome. Pain is inevitable. Suffering is optional. At number four. Now don't you bring all that Mariah Christina mess up in here. I don't care about hearing you. I want to hear God through you. Queen Latifah turns to the Bible for her next TV gig, teaming up with entertainment guru Holly Carter to produce a religious-themed drama for Fox. The scroll promises to recreate some of the Bible's most popular stories in the present day. Now, number three. The whip or the nay-nay? The whip. Tim Tebow could whip across 11 countries with 75,000 people Friday, as his foundation hosted an unforgettable prom night for children with special needs. It's called Night to Shine. I feel like a regular old person. I feel like a regular old person, not special needs. This is the prom's second year, and Tebow personally attended events in Haiti, Florida, and Arkansas. I think it's important because a lot of times they hear no. Um, that is a pretty common word that they hear. At number two. And the Grammy goes to Joey and Rory, hymns. An emotional first Grammy for Rory Feek for Best Roots Gospel Album, his last recording with his late wife, Joey. My wife's dream was to make a hymns album um, pretty much her whole life, and she didn't have a chance to do it until she had been diagnosed with stage four cancer. Tamala Mann took home the prize for best gospel performance, but there was a big buzz for the best new artist award. And the Grammy goes to Chance the Rapper. Chance honored God in his acceptance. Glory be to God. I, uh, I claim this victory in the name of the Lord. Glory be to God. I claim the victory in the name of the Lord. Let's go. And in his performance with Gospels Tamala Mann and Kirk Franklin. I get my word from the sermon. I do not talk to the serpent. That's how this is the sermon. That is it. I saw the turn. So many movies can hurt me. At number one the 25th Annual Movie Guide Awards, celebrating family entertainment, with honors this year for CBN founder, Dr. Pat Robertson, for lifetime achievement. It's a great honor, and I, I really think the credit belongs to uh, media, uh, uh, the, the movie guide. They do such a superb job, and it's a thrill for me to be part of this uh, celebration. CBN's documentary Pocahontas is also nominated for two Movie Guide Awards. It was originally an assignment from Gordon that mushroomed into a 30-minute documentary. I always pray before I do a story that God will take control of it, and he did. 
And those are your top five from Studio 5 for the week. Coming to you from Los Angeles, California, the city that just celebrated the biggest night in music. You know, we're talking about the Grammys. Now, among the contenders for this year's Grammy Awards, the duo for King and Country. But even before the award ceremony, they already had a Grammy on their shelf, and they're sitting down with us for this week's Studio 5 interview. Priceless, what inspired your involvement in this project? Did I fail them? That's all. There's no luck, huh? Did I do what needed to be done? Hey, the, the girls, where are you taking? It's not your problem. Happy trails. We went to our brother Ben. He's a filmmaker. And we said, hey, I don't think we knew what we were asking at the time. <laughs> uh, you know, as often you don't when you start a new venture. We said, look, we've, this has really resonated with our audience. Mm -hmm. What about taking this message to the silver screen? Wow, and you executive producer and you acting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it definitely uh, was a, a family affair in the sense of obviously our older brother Ben directing it, mm -hmm. um, being one of the producers, and then Joel saying, hey, you know what, I want to learn the American accent, I want to act, I want to be in this film. So uh, it's been one of the most complicated projects that I've ever worked on, but yet, I didn't have to do all the things that he had to do, so I can I can only imagine what he's thinking. It's right. a pretty gritty role for you too. Yeah, it was. You obviously know something about this. Then help me. Well, if you're hearing a little voice that's telling you to stay, that there's a larger hand at play here, then you might want to listen to that voice. These girls don't belong to you. Those girls don't belong to anyone. You go down this road, you can't go back to normal life again. There's some bad dudes who are gonna kill you. The reason that James, we wanted James to be an American is we wanted him to be a normal person who uh, is in this great country who had just a tragic incident. He lost his wife in an accident. And how so quickly life can change, but also so quickly how you can find yourself in um, these sort of deplorable scenarios. Sitting here with you and you saying that, it reminds me, you guys partnered with Lecrae for the song Messengers on mm. his Anomaly album. We sent him the tracks. Lecrae put the rap on it, <laughs> oh, nice. and it was like, well, and it worked beautifully, it you know? Did. I met him after the, f the, the song was done. After, after the album was out. So everybody would come up and do kind of like, hey, so how was it how hanging was out it? with yeah. your man Lecrae? I was like, well, after the fact, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> no, and we, we, we love what they're doing. Um, actually, one of the guys on Reach Records, a KB, who is, he's a great friend. We've toured with him. In fact, I remember well uh, it was right around Independence Day mm -hmm. when that week, as far as the issues of these shootings and, and on, uh, you know, was just mm -hmm. horrific. Mm -hmm. And it was the Friday we had a show together, KB and us, and he was mm -hmm. joining us on stage. And we had probably a two hour conversation of just really getting down, as Australians coming into this, you know, mm -hmm. but getting down to like the heartbeat of what this is and different skin colors and different walks of life. And that was the beauty of it. We all came together mm -hmm. and we have to, we have to start. But what comes along with diversity is you have to have the, you have to be deliberate in seeking understanding. See you just do I, every won't be right, oh so. If you missed the film in the theaters, the good news is Priceless is now available on DVD and for digital download. Still ahead on Studio 5. I don't need to think about it. I know I love you. A real life Romeo and Juliet story of forbidden romance. The amazing thing about Soretzi and Ruth's story is that even though there is a political element to it, the bulk of what we're truly discussing here is the power of love. And welcome back to Studio 5. Valentine's Day is all about love, 
But what happens when that love is forbidden? That's the subject of a great movie out in theaters right now. It is called A United Kingdom. And if you haven't seen it, here's your first look. We should not be fighting for segregation. We should be fighting for equality. That is where we should be focusing our minds, not on the wife I have chosen, who means you no harm, whose only apparent crime has been to fall in love with me and mine to fall in love with her. The film tells a beautiful uh, love story that inspired a nation. Roll, please. You know, there's an Africa that doesn't have to be about black or white exclusion. An Africa that is about unity, inclusion and equality. The amazing thing about Suretsi and Ruth's story is that even though there is a political element to it, the bulk of what we're truly discussing here is the power of love. There is a lot to think about. And, uh, and how much he is prepared to sacrifice and give and fight for that love to be allowed to live. I know I love you. And yes, yes. The amazing thing about Ruth and Suretsi is that, for me anyway, they embody the best of what love is, which is love is sacrifice. This is Ruth. I'm very pleased to meet you, sir. I will speak to my nephew alone. Refreshments will be provided for him in the house. This black man and this white woman getting married evokes prejudices within black people and white people, poor people, rich people, politicians, and uh, the public. A white woman by your side. God, are you trying to tear us apart? Look at them. They are fighting because of you. I mean you no harm. What you saw is what happens once they get together and the might of an empire is against them and how they prove that their might was stronger. If you choose to marry the leader of an African nation, you will be responsible for the downfall of the British Empire in Africa. These two people fall in love in such a committed and real and true way that they can withstand these political battles they find themselves facing. There will, of course, be a tribal council, so your people will have some sort of say in our running of your affairs. One of the things that hit me, apart from the fact that it is obviously a great love story, um, was the fact that it was a story of um, African independence. The legacy of the marriage between Ruth and Suretsi lives on. The current president of Botswana is Ruth and Suretsi's son. And the president himself arrived on set. Uh, hello, our director. How are you doing? Yes, good to meet you. Very good, good. Thank you. He saw David dressed as his father, and then later Ruth dressed as his mother. Well, yeah, I'm again with my parents. <laughs> I could see in his eyes that he was pretty affected by that, but he kept his composure. There's something so beautiful about the full circle of that, shooting there while he's president. And it was sort of in that moment that it really hit me that there was this man and he was a testament to Ruth and Suretze's very real legacy. They are so much in love that no one can defy it, no one can break it down. Whatever is thrown at them, they just say, we're in love, we're staying together. When people watch the film, whether you're married or not, whether you're in love or not, um, whether you believe in love or not, that you will see uh, a form of love that is both pure and true. And that being loved can, can sort of lend you sort of superhuman strength. Yeah, they offer us a benchmark for which we can, we can measure not only who we are today, who we were yesterday, but who we might want to become in the future. I think that's really important. My prayer is that the world will receive it in the spirit in which it is made, which is that it's a, a love letter to love. I am ready to serve you because I love my people. I love this land, but I love my wife. That story set in the 1940s and based on the lives of real people. David O'Yellow not only stars in the film, but he also personally handpicked every member of the team from the cast to the crew. Still to come on Studio 5.
Psalms 27 one had been in my heart for, for a while. I've been, you know, since the time I read it, I just, something that just gave me peace. A look inside the fate of an all-star player, Adrian Gonzalez. What do you hear? You hear the sound of Anthony Hamilton, and it is the perfect thing for me to be listening to right now because this is Grammy season here in Hollywood, and Anthony Hamilton is what's playing in my ear. Now I wasn't looking, I was fine on my own. Could come and go as I please, nobody questioning me. I don't know when things begin to change. You came and turned it all around, got me saying nay. That soulful sound of R&B's Anthony Hamilton often sings a prayer, God and heaven. It's no surprise, we caught up with this busy father of six boys here on the red carpet of the awards to honor inspirational entertainment. And in case you can't tell, I am a huge fan. Not only am I a father, but you know, I, I want to show some integrity and show integrity for my community and my, and my people and then come out and celebrate other people who have like minds and like spirits so it's very important there are times when you can't seem to find your way sky is dark and you can't tell the night from day Hamilton's heart shines here on stage singing his Grammy nominated single with the queen of gospel Pastor Shirley Caesar I've had some series of events in my life, uh, been adopted, uh, know my parents, but you know, life had its way. And, but without faith, I would have given up, and uh, God knows where I would be now. Yeah, definitely wouldn't be on this red carpet. <laughs> Los Angeles is home to the Dodgers and first baseman Adrian Gonzalez, a five-time All-Star winner and a four-time Golden Glove Award winner. He's sitting down with us to talk about what keeps his focus during the long baseball season. He's this week's Faith on the Field. It's about putting in the work, um, being, being physically prepared, being mentally prepared, doing everything you can on the video um, end of it, you know, the physical end of it, working in the cage, understanding the other, the opposing pitcher, all those things, and then just letting letting the game be the game. All you can do is work as hard as you can. This this is a game, we're not robots. We can't come out every day and, and you know, drive that guy in or do everything. You know, you're, there's gonna be a lot of failures and um, it's a long season. Uh, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that, can, good things can happen, bad things can happen. What matters is how we respond to every, every aspect, every situation in the game. And so for me, it's about just letting it happen and just trusting in the Lord. Everybody's going to judge, you know, me by, by the statistics at the end of the day. Did you get that big hit to, to, to drive in the runs? And so there's going to be times when you don't produce and everybody's going to come out and say, hey, what happened? Why didn't you produce? And so the, those are all things that we're groomed since we're little kids to, to come through in those situations. And so, you know, human nature is to to fear failure. Psalms 27 one had been in my heart for, for a while. I've been, you know, since the time I read it, I just, something that just gave me peace. It says the Lord is my light and my salvation. And whom should I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom should I be afraid? There's times when you're at the plate that it's, it's a tough moment in the game or, you know, it's a tough pitcher or, you know, you're going through tough, rough times at the plate and you're struggling and you, you, all these things are in your head and it turns into an I thought. I want to get ahead. I need to get ahead. And, and when I look at the, at the verse, it's just like, hey, wait, God's in control. It's how I respond to the result that really matters. And so for me, it's about trusting in Jesus and just allowing him to, to, to be that, that center of, of, of your thought process. You know, if you put your purpose on something on earth, you're always putting yourself at risk of, you know, that purpose or that fulfillment not being met. You know, it can, it can be taken away from you in a heartbeat. And so um, you, put, you put your purpose on Jesus, um, you know, that will never be taken away. Up next on Studio 5. I hate to interrupt. Just. Ma'am, I am so super sorry. You're sorry? 
I'm his wife. Fresh off the boat star, Chelsea Crisp. It takes a long time to, to learn the industry of Hollywood and find your place inside of it. With the key to waking up that big dream inside of you. And we are just about out of time for this edition of Studio 5, so let's take a look ahead to what we're working on for next week. Here's a hint, there's lots more music in your future. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. House Fires, the name, what's the yeah. meaning behind that? Um, we just, the place where normal, unguarded, real life happens is, is a, is a home, right? And that's where you learn patience with your spouse and kindness to your kids and, you know, that's like the real stuff and so that's where, that's where it needs to burn the, the brightest, right? One of your more popular songs, Good Good Father, um, did you write that? I'm one of the writers, mm -hmm. yeah. And House Fires is just one story from next week's rundown. As for the final word for this show, Hollywood is a place where countless people come to chase some big dreams. But what happens when those dreams die? Actress Chelsea Crisp has some advice for you. If you are a creative person and you're going after acting or filmmaking or music or something, you are going to probably have some jobs that you hate. <laughs> I did. Um, and I think, I think, you know, that's a part of it. You're going to take a, with any job, with any career, there's going to be, there are going to be things that you love and things that you don't like as much. And I think what I love so much about being an actor is find, pinpointing that thing, like, what do you give? What are you giving to people? And I think that can carry you through some pretty hard times. It's carried, carried me through. It's, it takes a long time to, to learn the industry of Hollywood and find your place inside of it. And... Um, and maybe that never happens. You know, it's, 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 there's no guarantees in any kind of creative endeavor. So I think you just have to be brave and know what kind of stories you want to tell. And remember this, God can breathe new life into a bigger dream for you than you can dream for yourself. That is the final word for this edition of Studio 5. Until next time, reach out and touch me at Ephraim Graham on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Snapchat. And then come on back and see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Bye-bye.